I'm Vanessa, the girl on the bike, and I'm here with the Honda CRF 1100L, the Africa twin. The sun hasn't yet come up, but I'm off on a day's muddy green laning adventure with HP Mav. Wish me luck. road on the Africa Twin and I've got to say I think I'm a little bit in love. I can't believe how smooth and powerful, comfortable, really nice bike to ride on the road. Uh, this is the L version so I don't have inbuilt sat nav so I've had my Cardo Intercom giving me the navigation and I've now made it to on the world and the man, woo, HP Mav is here and you see this beast covered in mud. Yeah. That's going to be us soon, but first up, it's time for a coffee and a chat about bikes. Ah, we've made it to the start of the off-road. Dun, dun, dun! I'm feeling a little bit intimidated. This is a 238 kilogram curb weight bike. Curb weight is quite important because that means you've got to add the 24 litre tanks worth of fuel weight and the engine oil. So I reckon we're probably looking at more like 260. It's powered by a 1100cc engine, which is just shy of 1100 in actual capacity with 105 newton meter max torque. So what Honda have done, I suppose, is gone, what might someone want to do with this massive adventure bike? put a pillion on the back and bags but they still want to have some fun coming out of here with that kind of weight and this gun of engine it's going to I happily sitting in six gear cruising along and open that throttle and there's so much more to give it's got more than enough power to have a lot of fun what actually really impressed me on the road was how well it corners and it almost does this thing where you're like lean into the corner and the bike will go, okay, cool, I got this. And it like powers and leans through the corner and it just gives you so much confidence. Although now it's time to go off road. And so I'm very much hoping that the same confidence it's given me on the road is gonna apply off road. Uh, and I'm also hoping that I don't have to try picking up that 260 kilogram weight. But if I do, I've got Mav here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll try and make sure the GoPro is on it if it happens. Going off road, this bike is equipped with six riding modes, which is pretty impressive. I've been in tour mode on the road, uh, but it also has user one and user two. So you can set if you are, have the technological and riding aptitude, I suppose, you can preset your user modes for yourself. You then got off road, which changes the power, the torque and the engine braking. Uh, traction control and ABS, gravel mode, urban and tour. And between all of these modes, I'm just going to go with the fact that Honda have done a whole load of research for the optimum setup of all of the different bits of technology and sensors that are going on on this bike to adapt to that terrain. So I'm just going to put it in off-road mode and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> I can confirm that the Africa Twin likes puddles. Okay, so apparently tail spin turn technique is really important on a big bike. <laughs> so this nutter is gonna try and teach me with 
this really little bike. What we're going to do is off the bike is a lot easier because then you can take much more of the weight of the bike. The lower you go, the easier it is to brake traction. So if you're off it, you can get lots of nice bounce. Turn the handlebars hard up to the left. Get your toe and your head pointed to where you want to go, just like basic loading technique. And then forget trying to ride it. You're trying to brake traction, so you've got to let go of some stuff. You've got to be a bit more aggressive with the clutch. It's not actually as many revs as you think. So. Gosh. Look over there. Stop looking at the bike. That's where you want to get to, isn't it? Ah, that's it. You good? Yeah. Oh my god. See, you're getting it there, right? Yeah, that's it. Now just carry on with that process. Oh my god. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's a quarter of a ton, and that, that's why. So, one thing is one smooth motion. Because when you put it down and hold it there to set yourself up, you want to be set up up here and, then just, and go. just go. There we go. Now we're cooking. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh my god. Okay, let's pause there. It's good. Let's do that. Oh my god. I'm actually like shaking from that. It's good. That is a beast of a bike. Woo! We're gonna practice again. Yep. Just to make sure that it's uh, me lacking the skill and not the bike, we're gonna get the pro having a go. Oh, oh full start. It's the first time he's touched this bike, mind. That's it, there we go. Yep, you want to do a 180. Better, better. Yep. You're, 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 you're kind of chickening out. That's it, you just got to carry it on. You know what we should do? Drop the bike. Drop the bike. So that we know that you're like, that, that it's going to be okay to pick up again. Okay. This is a good idea. Yeah, let's just put it down. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, 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 is that meant to happen? Yeah. It's going all the way over. <laughs> Lie down, pony. Lie down. <laughs> I'll just stand here and film, shall I? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so. There we go. Nice. <laughs> awesome. There you go. <laughs> okay. Let's go for a walk, shall we? Tell me that I got you. You definitely got me. Because you got me good. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you, you. We just did a super muddy one, one where your back end's going behind you. And yeah, I'm feeling really comfortable on this bike. Both off and on the road. Seat height, the standard seat is 850 to 870 millimeters, but you can get a scooped lowered seat, which is what I've got, which is 825. I am 172 centimeters, and right now I am flat footed, which is pretty damn cool. So 
I am 172 and I am comfortably on the ground. I'm a little bit of a groove right now in a trail, but on the flat road, I can reach the ground very easily. I am absolutely rating this bike. So I think part of what is making me feel so good on this bike is that it's got a shed load of power, 1100 cc for the road. So there is a lot of fun, a lot of torque, a lot of acceleration, but it's got these riding modes, which means when you go off road, you're not taking 1100 cc bike off-road because it tones it all down and puts it into a really manageable package to give you the confidence for off-road something actually that's pretty cool about it as well so you've got the the display close up of my face you've got the display on the bike and depending on the riding mode you're on you get a different display of information so for example if you are in touring mode you've got loads of information and insights and rev counters, gears, everything that you could really want on the screen. But when you go into off-road mode, where you're in a situation where your brain probably has a lot more to focus on, you know, the, the puddles, the rocks, what's going on in the terrain, they give you a simplified display screen just to keep things really simple at a glance. Uh, and then also the second street screen underneath gives you a bit more of the information as well. So it's really easy to to flick about and find what you need to know. Ground clearance, kind of important. You have down here, big protective belly guard as standard, but you've got 240 millimeter ground clearance. Um, as far as what I've got on this bike, this is the standard L, but there are a couple of extras. Um, because there's a risk of maybe putting it on a side, I've got the bars on just to give you a little bit of protection. Uh, and then I've got rails here to take some panniers should I want to bolt on some massive panniers on the back. Other than that, this is what you would expect. I've obviously also got the lowered scooped seat, uh, which is not standard. Must have forget that. Morning. Morning. Stay for it. That was horsepower meets horsepower. We've also got sandwiches, but we're going for a bit of an experiment today. We've got chicken and pepper wraps with gherkin. You've had your first mouthful? It's good. Yeah? It totally works. Totally works. <laughs> it does. I'm actually convinced. <laughs> oh, there we go. We are engaging off-road mode. No, no, it's not, there's a bolt. Oh, there's a bolt. God damn it. So it looks like you have to undo that. Oh yeah, that. undo that. Note to self, next time I come off-roading, remove the rubber bits on my pegs and then they'll be a little bit more off-road friendly. Oh, of course. Getting his action tool out. Because every man needs a tool, so mm -hmm. to speak. <laughs> okay, while Mav is using his tool on that side, I am going to make that. I'm actually finding it quite difficult on the gear changes. I am wearing my big <clears throat> enduro boots. So I'm wondering what sort of boots do most people use riding these sorts of bikes? Let me know in the comments. It's not an issue, but I have to disengage my brain a little bit more to hook my foot under, under and get it changed. Right, up top, we've got pretty easy controls. There's loads of buttons to be fair because it's got lots of settings on the bike. Not gonna run through all of that stuff because that's quite boring and really techy, but you've got it all. You can get heated grips as an optional extra. I did miss them at 7.30 this morning. Um, these hand guards give you a little bit of wind protection, but I'm actually not sure how much droppage protection they'll give because they are only plastic. So time would tell on those. Something I really like is that you've got your two little bobbly indicators here. So when you're riding along, obviously you're not going to be indicating off road, but on road, you can actually see them flashing. And so often with bikes, you end up leaving your indicators on because you don't realize they're still on. And I quite like that you can see that. Although this bike does have automatic indicator turn off, which seems to be working really, really well. It does get bored. So if you indicate way too early, it will sometimes turn off before you've actually made the turn because the trigger for it is speed based, not lean based, which means it might think you've turned already because you've changed your speed. Um, I don't know what else, <laughs> what else is cool about this, cut, this bike. Okay. I really like this bike. I'm having a lot of fun. I think we should stop talking to the camera and go ride. Okay, cool. <laughs> right, no. come on. Beast, we are going to do a 
do a power turn. I'm not going to drop it. That's it. Keep going. Okay, I'm going to look this way. Yep. Oh my gosh! That's it, see you getting it now. <laughs> okay. Oh no, we're going down. We're going down. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Let it go. Turn it, turn it. That's it, just kill the engine. Going down. Just let it go, let it go. That's it. Oh no. I think what I just warned about the plastic <laughs> handguard. May have just. I think oh, we're okay. Still okay. Still okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have a lie down as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so uh, how was that? Oh, I th uh, we're just having a lie down. Okay, it's good. It's good to have a rest. Yeah. Let's make sure it's important to make sure the bike has a rest too. Although I'm getting a wet bum now. <laughs> oh, my hip doesn't like that stuff. Right. Maybe I should just walk around it. Just to show my dominance, you know, I'm, Assert your position. I'm on top here, Yeah. I can run circles around you, bad boy. Okay, why don't I try the, uh, no, I think I like the other way. The back squat worked really nicely earlier. Okay, so. That's it. Oh my goodness. Too easy. <sighs> See? It's not that heavy, is it? <laughs> Boom. Okay. No, we're going down again. <laughs> oh, God. Just, yeah. Just put, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I stopped filming there for a second. It's alright, the GoPro is the GoPro It's is got running. such a wide angle. Okay, I think maybe we should just get a cool photo now. Okay. Ever wondered what an adventure bike looks like on its side? Yeah, that's it. Okay, having dropped it again. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm learning if you're not dropping it, you're not trying hard enough. So I thought these weren't gonna be all that protected and supportive. It turns out they've actually got a really cool sort of safety braking mechanism where this is designed to disengage. So it sort of slots in and goes across and it means that that disengages and becomes the weakest link without braking and stops something else snapping. Like it. On the legendary HP. Wow, mad for swat. Looking pretty good on the Africa Twin to be fair, but I completely understand why Mav loves this bike. What a beast! Oh really? Yeah, really. I've just been been told I'm gonna get really wet on the next run. So we just did a like a sporty, we weren't racing, but it was a sporty side by side down the trail and um yeah, Mav's moist now. We're gonna get wet. <laughs> <laughs> But the most important thing about that run was how blown away I'm with the suspension. It's got show suspension, inverted front, monotrack back, all the sort of 
damping, preload, etc. adjustment you'd expect. But coming from, say, the enduro bike, where I would see something in the road in front of me, like riding just now, and expect, you know, the big kick and the bounce and the suspension just sucks it all up and you kind of just glide. It's so smooth. Loving it. Anyone wondering about the brakes on this bike? Dunno, but the throttle's good. <laughs> actually laughing about that Mav was on the side of the track taking some photos and I had to go fast through the first puddle and then slam on the brakes almost emergency stop style to then not go through the second puddle next to him and the camera really fast and yeah I can confirm that the brakes are solid they they grip and I stopped and Mav didn't get soaking wet at that point So I stood here eating some cashew nuts and raisins and I've realised that this bike makes me want to disappear across Europe and hit up some alpine tracks, some tarmac and just go on an adventure. It really does. It is so capable on and off. I just want to go. I actually just offered to get up in the morning and drive to Mavs to escort him to work because it's a commuter's off road. I'm hoping he's not going to take me up on that. Um, yeah. So Vanessa, how much big biking, you know, off-road big biking have you done in the UK before? In the UK, I think my, the number of adventure bikes I rode went from maybe two to six at the ABR bike festival last summer. So I rode a couple there around the little enduro loop and stuff. So this really is my first time proper going down green lanes in England. And, you know, I know it from enduro side right. on a smaller bike, but on a big bike, I, I'm loving it. The mud, the, there's yep. rocky bits, the puddles. <laughs> the puddles where you get really <laughs> yeah, wet. Yeah, where I get wet, right. my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot of fun to be had in the UK. Everyone always talks about this massive adventure and taking six weeks, three months of right. work to go. I think there's a lot of fun that could be had in the UK in your weekends. So can you see yourself doing more? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. More, more, more trails, more, more getting Mav wet. More getting Mav wet. <laughs> yeah. And I could, I could happily see that in my garage. Yeah. In turn, to be fair. But, but it would never replace an enduro bike for you. No, 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 no. There's something about the technical, just ridiculousness of the sort of terrain that you tackle on yeah. an enduro bike. I right. think, I mean, my, if I was only allowed one bike ever, it would just always be my, my enduro two stroke. Yep. Um, but N plus one is yeah, the yeah. equation Obviously. for how many bikes. Yep. So, yeah. So, so conclusion is get out and, and, and find trails. Yeah. Uh, a tip for helping you find trails is something like View Ranger, which is a digital OS mapping where you can plot routes, find byways. Yep. Um, and there's loads all around the country. There really is. So adventure is on your doorstep. Go find adventure! it. Adventure! Yes, I love that. Go find it on your doorstep. Very good. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching some of my previous videos. So I've had a few questions on the Trident first ride review. And the big one that loads of you seem to want to know is the ground clearance. It's taken a little bit of digging to find out, but 148 millimeter is the ground clearance on the Trident. Bearing in mind that that is a street bike, I was doing some pretty awesome cornering. I didn't have peg scraping. I didn't feel like I had any issues there, but that's your fact to know. The other question I had on that was how ideal it would be for a new rider and is there enough power? Now I would say yes and yes, but if you are a more experienced rider looking for something with a lot more thrill in the throttle, you've got to bear in mind that this is a middleweight bike that is designed to be able to have your A2 license on. So if you're looking for something that's a bit of a rocket, maybe the Trident is going to feel a little bit on the, the less fruity side, but for a new rider or someone bringing confidence to, to want to bring on more confidence, I think it would be an amazing bike. Um, I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike. I'm stood here eating my cashews and raisins out in the countryside <laughs> in England. Thanks so much for watching. Hit subscribe, get notifications with the bell, and don't forget to check out my other social channels. But on that bombshell, <gasps> Jeremy Clark's a moment. That was really bad. I'm just gonna get my bike. We got my favorite thing. We got a Ford. Yeah. Yeah. Boop, boop.
me. 122 miles, sunrise to sunset, and that was awesome. What a bike.